Hey everybody, hope you are doing well. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages here with another Grown Up Grammar. Today we're going to talk about personal pronouns. So what is a pronoun? Well, if you look at the word itself, pronoun has the word noun in it. And pronouns are nouns that replace other nouns. That means that pronouns can do all the things that other nouns do. They can be subjects, they can be direct objects, they can be indirect objects, they can be objects of prepositions. Now, there are many different types of pronouns. Personal, possessive, demonstrative, relative, interrogative, indefinite, reflexive, and intensive. Today, we're just going to talk about those first two groups, the personal and possessive. Personal pronouns are divided into two types, subject and object. By subject, of course, we're talking about uh, the doer of an action, right? Your subject always comes in front of the verb. Object, on the other hand, can mean a variety of different things. The three other uses that we've talked about, the direct object, what does the action affect immediately? The indirect object, essentially who the object affects, you know, the, the second party affected by whatever happens with the verb, and then the object of the preposition. Then we've got our possessive pronouns. Now these, this is the one exception to the rule. Pronouns are nouns, but anything that is possessive, although it's still technically a noun, uh, whether we're talking about possessive pronouns or our nouns with the apostrophe S, okay, the teachers show, the, the, the teachers does, uh, lecture, um, they're nouns that act as adjectives because what are they doing? They're describing other nouns. And so while in the dictionary, these possessive pronouns are listed as pronouns and so technically they're considered nouns, um, they are much more common to adjectives than they are to noun. They have uh, mainly adjective properties. So the, all three of these look very similar. We're just gonna consider them together. I'm gonna to call them personal pronouns, although technically the possessive pronouns uh, do occupy a group of their own. Let's take a look at them, okay? Your personal pronoun, your subject uh, personal pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. Look how the object pronouns are a little different. I, me, you, you, that's the same. He, him, she, her, it, it, that's the same. We, us, you, you, they, them. Then there's the possessive ones. My, your, his, her, its, are, your, their. You can see there's um, a lot of similarity because they all come from the same root. This is actually an old system that was around when English still declined its nouns. English used to be like Latin or like Russian is today, where uh, not only did our verbs conjugate like they do in Spanish and lots of other languages, but the nouns and adjectives also changed form depending on what part of the sentence it was used in. We lost that. We became a much simpler uh, language that instead uh, is based on where in the sentence a part of speech is. That's why it's important to keep your word order the same in English. You cannot move words around because that order is important in English. We lost our conjugations. We lost our declensions. 
most of our conjugation. In any case, though, this pronoun system still reflects the old system. We have not lost all of those, differ uh, those differences. So he, him, his. This comes from a very older version of English. And it confuses students a lot, especially if you learned, you know, verbally through, you know, just uh, living in a country and using the language as opposed to learning it in school, right? Because it's a lot harder to hear the differences between you and your, um, you know, those, those um, little sounds at the ends of the words. So if you're not comfortable, this is a good chart to copy down and use as reference. Okay, subject, if it's at the beginning of your sentence, you need to use your subject pronouns. If it comes after the verb, you're gonna use your object pronouns. And if you're using it to describe something else, you use the possessive pronouns. Couple sample sentences. You can see, I love him but he loves me, right? Subject, he, object, after the verb, me. My mom, my is the possessive pronoun, loves both of us. Of is a preposition, so I need it to be the object of the preposition, both of us. Let's look at it in a larger sentence. The parents buy the girl a gift for the boyfriend. They, her parents, buy her it for him. We don't normally write our sentences only with uh, pronouns because it can get a little weird. There's a little bit of a weird sentence. But you can see they is the subject, her parents, Okay, notice I can have two subjects because I'm using a comma. Okay, that comma tells me that the her parents, the part that's inside of the commas is extra information. I'm giving you more details. So it doesn't really count as an extra subject. It's just extra information. They, her parents, by her, that's my indirect object, because remember the order, indirect object, direct object, it, for him, him is object of the preposition. Finally, why do we use pronouns? As you could see in the previous sentence, it can get a little weird if you only use pronouns because then people don't know what you're talking about. Keep this in mind. It is very, very important to introduce what you're talking about before you replace whatever noun with a pronoun. Okay, so when you write, don't start with the pronouns. The pronouns come in the second sentence or, or later in the paragraph. I'm going to give you two good reasons for using the pronoun. Okay, here we've got our first one. This is a sentence uh, we used earlier. The exceedingly well-behaved student sitting next to me while we were studying English in class at 9 o'clock at night on a Monday evening in our local community college's off-campus site Seems nice. No, seem nice. Oh. So that's a really long sentence. They seem nice. By using the pronouns, I am able to consolidate a lot of information into a smaller space. It helps me process the sentence. It helps me get a better idea of what's going on in the sentence because I don't have all those extra details. So whether you know, you're know you writing and you just want to um, you know, write less, <laughs> you know, as long as you, you know, you don't want to sac sacrifice important information, but you know, if you want your writing to be a little bit more concise, short, you can use your pronouns. Or if you're just trying to process long sentences, you're trying to read something and it's very confusing. 
in your head or on the, you know, when you're writing notes, you can try to break it down so that you can see the structure. So you can see how the parts of the sentence go together. Okay, they seem nice. Well, I found my subject. Before it was very long and very scary, but it doesn't look as scary anymore, does it? The second most common reason to use pronouns is to avoid repetition. English speakers are not a big fan of repetition. We like things short and sweet. We like to get to the point. Time is money, that's part of our culture. And so when you repeat the same word over and over and over again, it's a little grating, it's a little annoying. Listen to this sentence. Bill and Cindy like their new house. Bill found the house online and Bill and Cindy went to look at the house together. Cindy agreed with Bill that the house would be a wonderful house to live in. So Bill and Cindy bought the house. It's a decent sentence. But look at this next one. First of all, look how much shorter it is. Bill and Cindy like their new house. He found it online and they went to look at it together. She agreed with him that it would be a wonderful house to live in, so they bought it. Same exact information, but the sentences flow better because you're not saying the same word over and over again. Now, you can see here towards the end, I repeated house again, and that's fine. The thing about writing well is having variety, having different sentence lengths, having a variety of words. That makes it interesting. But repetition again and again and again gets old. Time to practice. We'll do something a little differently today. I'm not gonna have you write, but I do recommend that you read a story or a news article and circle all the pronouns used. For now, uh, personal pronouns. Look for patterns. That means how common are they? When are they used? How are they used? Compare that to your writing. Compare that to what's common in your culture. You know, I think of something that you can share in the margins. Do English speakers use pronouns more or less than in your country? Um, by studying how native speakers use the language, that'll help make you a better language learner. And so when, especially when we're talking about little words, prepositions is another great thing to do with this with, you know, pronouns, the, the little words, are so easy to miss. We just gloss over them. We just we we don't see them because we're we're trying to figure out how to pronounce the big long ones. But the little words make up the heart of your sentence. They're very important and they're very easy to mess up. People make the most mistakes with the smallest words because the smallest words are the most difficult. So by forcing yourself to pay attention to these small words like the pronouns. You can learn a lot. Give it a try and you can comment what you thought about the experiment. I'll leave you to it then. Thank you as always for watching. I've got lots more videos for you at apexlanguages.com. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.